Welcome. I'm really, I'm really happy you guys are here. Um, and uh, first, I think, I think we'll start with questions from the masterclass. If you guys had any, or even not even questions, like if you just, you know, like what did you, what did you hear for the first time that went? I already knew that. I already knew that, but uh, but hearing it said in that way, it brought it here and it kind of landed and it's like, now I can breathe a little bit easier. You know, did anybody have any of those experiences? Yeah. Share. Yeah, always. Yeah. I, I, every time I listen to you talk, it's like, oh, finally somebody else where, you know, you know, it's, it's taken a long time to get here and, and me being me, I don't, I don't push it i never bother to push push once i'm once once something you know whatever anyway so there was a lot during that that i i took in and and wondered about and with me it's it's more of history that i'm trying to catch up on and see if i was right in a sense and when you had you were talking about Jesus and you said, oh, he's here. I wanted right then to know if that was the same one that Edgar Casey said was his sister, Leela, who had died and earlier on in, in, in the, her childhood because um, her parents supposedly like I, I I read a bit about Edgar Casey and 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 the lives of Leela okay. was one of the most important things that popped out to me in that whole thing because it gave me a whole different perspective on death and and you know the whole reincarnation or you know the spiritual energies that create each one of us that isn't just one specific spirit kind of thing right and in in edgar casey's story of his sister yeah. Leela, who had died early he had said that she had carried the spirit of jesus and i was just wondering if that was the same jesus like the same spirit or if that yeah. story even was okay true. so that's really cool i um have actually Edgar Casey is one of the only like maybe three people that I've actually spent a little bit of time um, studying, but I was studying him for his healing and uh, his work with in alignment with castor oil specifically, because he was a huge proponent of that. So I know who he is. So this is exciting for me. I, I don't know anything about his sister and what he's talked about. So um, that, so when I'm feeling into it, um, absolutely. You know, she was, she was embodying, uh, the word that is coming is Christ energy. So, um, Christ energy is, um, I'm just going to mute whoever's not talking just so that it's not too, uh, it's so that it's awesome. Okay. So, <laughs> so ultimately, um, Christ energy is it's like an amplification of the physical aspect of Jesus, if that makes sense. So it's like the energetic um, vibration, right? So Jesus Christ is uh, a universal being who came and, you know, he came to help humans remember their value and worth and to restore um to restore a sense of purpose for our future, right? And ultimately, like he's saying, you know, and the creator is here and, and they're both saying, you know, that mission accomplished more than they had hoped. And, you know, I think a lot of us are, would say like in our minds, we'd be like, no, that did not, <laughs> it was not good. But it accomplished more because it instilled an awareness that there is more than the suffering that was being endured at the time. The only thing was, and this is where um, Jesus, you know, he felt like he missed his mark in the sense that 
the goal was to restore humans' belief in themselves. And what ended up happening is it became humans' belief in Jesus. And so it again perpetuated and and right. And so that's why religion used it, right? They used it to leverage, like I'm seeing whenever they show me that motion, like leveraging, right? So they, you know, religion used it to leverage their shadow system, you know, that that limiting belief system that says, don't believe in yourself, believe in something outside of you, right? So, you know, at the end of the day, it here's the cool thing. Whenever someone tries to manipulate someone else, the best manipulators are when they get super close to the truth. Why? Because we feel it. We feel truth. We know truth. And then it's like they'll use three or 4% to mess with you. And in that space, that's where it's really dirty. So if you look at the universal, like the manipulation that's gone on with humanity, it's understanding that, you know, 80, 90, 98% is, is close to the truth. It's pretty darn accurate. It's that tiny little bit that takes it and makes it horrendously destructive. And it's, it's the parts that, you know, cause the most damage, right? Like if you I'm just feeling into like the dynamic even of trust. And this is where trust really became, really became necessary is when we needed to shift back to this greater awareness, right? That trust was, it became necessary. And why it became necessary is because they knew we were being lied to over and over again but we needed to learn how to trust ourselves. And that's really, you know, what we're doing. That's why this whole human race is where we are. That's why people are waking up. And we're waking up in entirely different ways. We're not meant to all wake up the same way. And the thing is, is we've been taught that everyone should be doing it the same way because of the education system right? The education system says everybody does it the same way, but the original belief system, right? The original creation of human beings is everyone's unique. Everyone's going to do it a different way. And they've made sure that we use judgment to ensure that if they're not doing it this way, then we're going to judge everyone and everything, right? Yeah. And, and we all feel that. We all get that coming at us in every different way. You can't walk down the street and share how you feel without an opinion, a perspective, or a judgment coming at you. And it doesn't really matter what it's about, whether it's about your awakening or whether it's about what you had for breakfast. It doesn't matter. Everyone's got an opinion. And that comes from the education system, right? Where it's okay to pass judgment, period. And it's, yeah, if you think, yeah. right? When you think judgment, about it. Uh, yeah. What, right? Like thinking about it, you know, when you're taught to be in school and then you have to, um, you have to perform for adults. And then as a child, what are you thinking? You're thinking, man, I can't wait to be an adult so I can tell other people what to do. It's what, right? We've all gone through it. We all come to that place. And I mean, I remember thinking that way. I know that, you know, my son goes through it even still, and he's not even in the education system, but it's in our society, right? It's just prevalent in the society. So it's continuously coming back to we're self-governing and we have to remember how to do that. So that was really what Jesus came here to do. And it's just, it was, it was fascinating because they laid the foundation. And then religion took it and manipulated it and made it into this Jesus Christ is going to come back. And it was just this week. And I went, oh, I get it. Humanity is the second coming of Christ. Humanity. All There's of us. There's so many things in, in, yeah. 
Yeah. Like, no, there's like, I get goosebumps just saying it because it isn't one being it's all of us. And that's the point. That's the whole point. And he's like, Jesus is so cool. He's right here. And he's like, that's what I came to do. That's exactly what I came to do. And he says, that's why all of us who were introduced to religion at some point and kind of went, I like it. I like some parts, but some parts, eh, not so much, right? I studied and I went to a ton of different churches and different, like every belief system with native elders. Like I have done ceremony. I have done, I've, I've had an amazing life full of experiences and different religions as well. And the cool thing is humans are way more similar in the sense of how we experience life than we want to believe. We love to come together and celebrate with other humans. Those who have caught to the point where they've completely shut down and don't want to is because they are too scared from all of the other things. But that is different. But for the most part, humans love to come together to celebrate and the biggest one that I, I see on a regular basis is people want hope. And I will say that hope is probably one of the underlying most destructive energies on the planet because hope is a, I hope this is going to work. Like I really, I really hope it's going to work. And it's a, there's, there's nothing to it. It's flat. When you feel into the energy of it, it's not universal. It's mental. Well, the whole world got that way during COVID. Well, and, and that was, <laughs> was that global. was, and that was the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? That was the, the conversation we were being fed, right? Hope. If you get vaccinated, you're creating hope. If you follow the rules and wear a mask, you're creating hope. And the reality is hope is, it's, it's not universal. It's, it's really, um, it's, oh, I wrote this the other day too. There's zero recognition of your own power. That's really, um, Carol, of that. I saw hope. It's like a cliff. It's a steep drop to nothing. It, it is. There's nothing there. It's zero recognition of your own power in your life, right? So truth is where we, uh, there's no action in hope. None. You guys are amazing. Exactly. There's nothing, right? And it's empty. And yet, how many of us use that energy as our guiding light? Because we've been taught to right? It's how we communicate with other humans. So yeah, it, um, it's really, really cool. I love how the conversations just swirl and they, they go exactly how they're meant to. So Randy, I really, I really appreciate that. And, and yes, you know, she was definitely, um, Layla, is that what you said her name is? Um, yeah. Um, yeah. It, it depends on how you pronounce it, I guess. It's L E I E. I think L I. Okay. <laughs> It's all yeah, good. It's perfect. I'm, yeah, L E I L A, Leela. Okay. Leela, yeah. And I, um, you know, she was, yeah, absolutely. She came and, and you know, sh her intention was to embody that. Um, for her, it was truth through compassion, right? Because Jesus embodies compassion. And compassion is, I don't need you to be anything other than you are. Which, when you really feel that energy, right? That's one of the ones we're going to do this summer, right? Because it's one of the nine fundamentals. It's understanding that I don't, when, just imagine if you could be surrounded by humans who don't need you to be anyone other than who you are. How would that feel? I don't know because I don't like people too much. That's that's the problem. There's <laughs> well, too many too many different vibes in space that I just can't 
handle, right? So I'd rather be alone most of the time now. And I think that, you know, that's what in our, we have a, um, a private community we meet with once a week, um, the Authentic Human Collective. And we've been doing that for three years. And it's really fascinating because we've created a space where we can talk about all the things, where we can break it down, we can decompress. And I can tell you that the humans in that community are very different than those who have been holding all of the fear and anger and they continue to hold it because we're breaking it down as it happens. We're facing it, we're talking about it with other humans, which is what we need. We need connection. And it's really interesting because I was, I was talking with a neighbor the other day and she said, like she said something about when we were in lockdown and we couldn't go into other people's homes. And she was like, oh my gosh, I just had such a crazy reaction. And she said, clearly I still have all of this resentment inside of me. And I, it was this cool moment of recognition of, we've been working through it the whole way, the whole time. So we're not carrying the resentment and the fear and the anger. We're, we're looking to the future. We're looking yeah. at what does this mean rather than being scared. And, and, you know, we're helping other humans through their own challenges at this point. Right. So it's really, really cool. All right. I didn't, I didn't bother through COVID about it at all. I took four shots. It didn't bother me. Because I had faith in getting here today, yeah. I believe. There you go. It's amazing. It's brilliant. So thank you, Randy. I really appreciate it. And Thanks for the great answer. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> All right. So did anybody else, how were your experiences? Tell me about what you um, what you felt during the masterclass. What was that moment for you where you went, oh, that makes sense. That that, you know, that makes me feel not so alone, makes me feel not so crazy. <laughs> um, you know, is there anything that you, or, or maybe you had something else, or maybe you have a question about something um, that we talked about. This is your chance to, to share. And again, remember, there are no questions, no comments that are wrong because there's no such thing, right? You're here for a reason. So, hi, Carol. Hi, hi, everybody. Um, the I had a the the week after the amazing call, um, things just kind of started to like click into place um, that we've been talking about for three years. <laughs> um, the the I know that we're here to play, but it just kind of sunk in a little deeper, and knowing that the four pillars and what they were and what they were. <laughs> yeah. Right. I and, love that. <laughs> right. Yeah. And um, then it, it, I just, it, I don't know. It was just click, 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 click. And it just got lighter and easier and more fun for myself personally afterwards. And it felt really good. But my one question that I had, well, I had a couple during, but my one was the, the, they, can I call them the nefarious ones? Okay, you can. Absolutely. Yeah? You know exactly okay. what you so, mean when you say that. So that's brilliant. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so do do they want to learn about love? Are they, um, can, so can they actually question. learn? Love that question. So um, let's see. So they're saying... Um, They're curious. They're curious um, and, and also uninterested at the same time. Now, there's a reason for that, okay? Because they don't have the vibration to align with it. So to experience it would be similar to a human experiencing love without the knowledge of their soul. It's not a very interesting experience. <laughs> if you think about our lives until we started remembering the truth, it wasn't very interesting. It was like, I got to do this and I got to do that. And that's what, it's cool. I've never seen it explained that way. That's awesome. Thank you. So 
what what he says so he is in the highest of all of them because they'll have a spokesperson to help um so when i first started communicating i was like okay this this can't work because like th two three million beings showed up on the other side and i was like yep okay we got 45 minutes this isn't going to work so you know we came to an understanding that when there was a bigger message that there would be one sort of spokesperson so that i could could share or we'd go directly to the source, which, and, and that's the same, this still a spokesperson, so to speak. Anyways, <clears throat> so he, just to clarify, so you understand where all the information is coming from. <laughs> it's always nice, right? So he says, um, you know, they're intrigued, but intrigued is not interested. And when you're interested, you're invested in participating in that experience. And because they don't have the fundamental, so it's really cool because right now they're having a conversation with the creator to see if they could be calm and participate in that vibration of love. So you just started a whole universal conversation. Thank you very much. Love it. So this is exactly what I used to do when I first started doing this uh, 18, 19, 20 years ago. Um, these were, these were the kinds of conversations I was having in a closed room. And I literally have oh, a couple hundred hours recorded on, on CDs anyways. So let's see, what is he going to, so the, the creator said he's got, he says he's going to ponder the, um, opportunity because that's exactly what it would be um he says we're not ready yet humanity's not ready yet because we don't remember yet how to decipher between universal beings and non-universal beings so the trust in our own instincts needs to be restored before external beings could come and play here at that level of vibration especially the beings who manipulated right um they we need to, it's like, it's like when you get into an argument with someone, like a really bad fight argument, right? And it's someone you love, but you still have to build trust again with that person because they've hurt you. So your conversations are different. They're tentative, right? And you're trying to figure out how, you know, how to get to know this person at this new vibration of, okay, this is what you did to me. This is our experience that we had, or maybe I did something to you. And now I need you to trust me or you need, I need, you know what I mean? My head just went spinning there for a minute. I was like, I don't even know. Anyways, the super fun. So ultimately we, We need to restore our abilities first, but that is an amazing question. Thank you. Yeah. Now you said you had more than one. Did you want to? Yes, please. Um, my mind this morning went to, uh, I, I feel like there's something else that there's something missing on the planet, like a mineral that we used to have that balanced us more that isn't here anymore or yeah. is told that it's not important as, as, as it is. Well, there's, the metal there's quite, um, when I say quite a few, there's, that's, that's a lot, um, in relation to what the needs to thrive. However, so it's, Um, and yeah, because it, it couldn't exist as a result of, um, what's the, the industrial revolution. Okay. So you can feel that you're feeling. Yeah. And so it will be restored again. It's not gone forever. It's just deep in the earth. So it's not like someone can drill down and find it. We're talking like, you know, yeah. hundreds of thousands of feet into the core of the earth where humans can't go. Why? Well, it's protected, <laughs> right? And there'll always be someone who's like, I'm going to try and go there because those people who want things in that way um, don't, un don't understand the value of it, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, if you look at 
how the world mm -hmm. is at this point. We want stuff mm -hmm. for a, a lot of different reasons. Most of the time we want stuff so that we can either make more money or we can have people think we make more money or all of the reasons that we want stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And it's recognition that it will, it's like, it, like they're showing me, it's like a geyser will shoot out of the earth when humanity's ready. Because you have to remember when humanity's ready, then we'll have the awareness of A, that it's being restored, how it's going to be restored to make sure that we're not in the vicinity at the time. But also there's not going to be anyone going, oh my God, I got to get my watch. I got to get my clock. I got to get some for me, right? Like that's not how humanity ever, ever existed, right? Before the financial system. It's just, it didn't work that way. And so it's understanding that this is where we're at now, right? We're at this place where we're restoring the awareness of self first before those types of things can be returned, right? It's beautiful, really. And you can see it, right? Like they said, it's going to be about 500 years, which makes total sense. It, it makes total sense. I mean, we've been 50,000 years into that destruction mode. We're not going to all of a sudden just be like, yeah, I'm going to watch that over there. And I'm not going to have my consumption mindset, right? I'm going to just be like, yeah, I'm just going to let it all happen. We're not there yet. Mm. We're mm. not there. But we're getting closer, right? The more we restore and heal our self-worth, the more we don't have need for the external gratifications that we've been taught are how we value ourselves and how the world values us, right? So it's coming. It's coming. That was great. Those were two awesome questions. Thank you. Love it. Anybody else want to share anything? Yes, Danielle. Hi. Hi. I have a question. It's a bit vague, but when you say you need to know who you are, it seems yep. really vague to me. And I wonder if you can explain it a little bit more so I could grasp it more. I love it. On what that means. Yes. And, and you know, it's funny because every time I write it, I'm like, it does feel vague. And yet it's the simplest explanation of the truth that I can, you know, create. But Right now, we're living in an entire illusion, right? Who we've been taught to be. We don't know who we are. And we don't, we're on automatic pilot. We don't know what we like. We don't know. It's really cool how they're showing me. The most important experience human beings can have is connection. Our ability to connect with energy itself is the foundation for our ability to feel everything and experience life as we were meant to. It drives every experience you have. It tells you how to act and react, but we're not feeling. We're thinking our way through all of these things. So there's so many components to knowing who you are. And the, the whole point, like, that's really what I've studied for the last 20 years is who are humans really? Because it's peeling back all the layers of untruth. And it's so different from who we've been taught to be, right? So we keep getting all of this pressure to stay in this human physical world where you think first and if you're lucky, you might feel something, I don't know, a year or two later, right? Like it's just, you know, how many people have traumatic experiences and it's like 15 years later that all of a sudden it, that history comes back up but they have memories of it because it has to clear that they've only started feeling then. It's, you know, yes, it's our protection mechanism that's built into us, but it's also understanding that we weren't ever created that way. So it's a, it's a tricky question to answer because we're so much more. And that's the point is we have no idea who we are. And yet these are all the things like, I mean, I've been studying it for 20 years. It's every little bit of 
everything that I've learned in those 20 years contribute to, oh, that's another thing we don't know. That's another thing we don't know. But the short answer is we're living in illusion. It's fundamentally different. It goes against every one of our natural instincts, every one of them. And when you start to restore the basic fundamental natural instincts, then you begin to create a foundation that you can build on. And that's that's really where this summer is going to be so, like the Elevate experience. That's exactly it. it. My intention is to elevate your vibration so you can have more of you in your life, in your world, in your understanding. And I mean, our souls are who we are. We're meant to guide ourselves on this journey of evolution. We're meant to always know everything we need to know when we need to know it. We don't need to walk around with a whole bunch of information in our head because that's not how universal knowing and learning goes. It's the moment you focus on something, everything in existence that relates to that comes to you. That's how I get answers. That's why whenever someone, <clears throat> excuse me, ask me a question and it doesn't matter if it's here, if it's walking down the street, you know, if I hear something on the radio, if I'm watching a TV show, if someone asks a question, I'm going to get an answer. And that's how all of humanity was created to exist. Can you imagine? Can you imagine your life knowing all the time how it's comforting? It's comforting. It's freedom. There's no fear in it. You know, I've literally worked with clients who were going through being sued for ridiculous things, but they were all lies. But I was able to get the truth and say, okay, this is, this is, this is the lawyer you need. Then this is what you need to share with your lawyer specifically. This is also, you know, you want to, but it's not just truth. It's understanding that compassion is a component of that. It's understanding why the person wanted to do it in the first place. Because when you understand it, you don't get angry. You have awareness and you have compassion. And it's like, okay, I understand why you did this. And if I can, you know, I'm helped, able to walk them off the ledge of the anger of, I can't believe it, right? The point is all of humans were meant to experience life this way. And so that's why I wrote the book, Believe, so that you could start to understand all of these elements of your existence that are vital to your success. And now, you know, like I said, you know, we're <laughs> years in and everyone's like, please, can you do another workshop? I did this workshop uh, in 2012 one time. And so I've heard a number of times, please, can you go deeper? Can you go deeper? And that's what we're doing because when you know who you are, everything becomes possible. There's no barriers. There's no limits anymore, right? That's the whole point is we've been taught to live in a world of limits. And when you know who you are, the limits dissolve. So it's not a tangible thing to say, you know, who you are. It's, it's like when people are saying, you know, what's my sole purpose? And they want a job description. It's the same thing. I can't give you that kind of an answer in the sense of here's here's the definition of that it's it's an understanding that who you've been taught to be is fundamentally different than who you are and that's what we, we need to restore because then all of it you just make sense and you're like oh okay right i hope that helps that does thank you <laughs> thank you I have one other really Absolutely. quick one and it's, it's kind of a funny one, but I'm going to ask. I think it's funny because I think it's a little bit ridiculous for me to ask, but I'm going to go ahead. And there ask is no you. ridiculous questions. If we have a question, it's usually, and especially when you feel like they're the most ridiculous, it's usually in alignment with your sole purpose in one way or another. Either it's uncovering something that is um, misunderstood and you're like, there's just something a little bit off or it could be something. To, anyways, you go ahead. So my question is, is source AI like a good part, a good AI, not, not like I love some that. of the darker ones what they're trying to tell us about, but is it, is it AI? No, 
The, no, absolutely not. Because AI, it's artificial, right? So yeah. artificial intelligence means it gets its intelligence from um, feeding off of other intelligence, right? Okay. Makes yeah. sense? Yeah. So it has to be fed, otherwise it doesn't learn. It doesn't, there's no vibration. It's flat. It's not a, it's not an, it's not a being who has its own vibration. Every conscious being in existence has its own vibration. So all the humans do, yes, but the universe itself has its own vibration. Every planet, every star, the wind, water, rocks, everything that is created in existence has a vibration. That being said, okay, things like plastic don't have a vibration. Well, they do. They do. It's very flat. They do. It's very flat and it's not alive. So it's not continuing. There's no growth in it, if that makes sense, energetically, right? So every, that's really cool, actually. That's a great way to see it. Every being, every universal being has a vibration and every vibration is coded with growth. We're encoded with it because we're meant to evolve. Evolution is, is the core intention of this entire experience. So it's woven through everything. And um, artificial intelligence is just a it's a fabrication of an intention to cause more manipulation because what happens is all the information that's being fed into that, everything's being taken into account. And again, if you look at the history we were just talking about from your last question, which is amazing, right? The history of humanity and most people's belief systems align with all of everything going against our natural instincts. So AI right now is, ex it is an exact replication of that. So I have people reach out to me all the time. You know, it's ridiculous. They're like, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna get your followers up on social media. And I'm like, that's not where people find me. They find me from word of mouth, right? Five continents, like tons and tons of countries all over the world. It's all through word of mouth because it's truth. And you, when you meet another human who has that vibration, it's truth. And it's really cool because they're like, we're going to use AI to build. And I'm like, you're going to take this content. I mean, there's people out there who've taken recordings of almost everything I've done and they've fed it in. It's there. I'm not, I'm not oblivious to that. But my intention is holding space for purity. And purity um, has zero intention, zero room for manipulation. So, um, yeah. So to answer your question, um, source is, so when I feel it's really cool, it's, it's the existence of all that is, and it's the existence of existence itself. And it has every bit of awareness of that existence since the moment it was conceived as a intention, right? Because we come back to energy or intention becomes energy becomes your experience. So everything that is ever written is in the vibration of source, which anything that's ever ex experienced or happened in, in the entire history of existence itself has a vibration. That's why when you set your intention to receive the awareness of it, it comes. The problem is most people can't get the information because they're attached to the outcome and they think it needs to be a certain way. What taught us that? Science taught us that. Science taught us you have to think along these lines in order for it to make sense. And that's not, again, that's not how universal energy works. Universal energy is open your mind and let whatever comes in allow your awareness to expand. And then your job is to just go, huh, okay. Most people, when they hear truth and, and universal awareness, they're like, let me see. And there are brains. It's it, like how I see it is our brains are kind of filled with files. It's like a filing cabinet and they want to take the universal information and, and file it. Right. And 
That's not how we were created. We're created to not have anything in our brains. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Our brain is literally designed to go, huh, I can see the stoplight. That's good. I should stop. But it's not it's not a guide. It's not a leader, right? It's a, it's a follower. It follows signs. It doesn't lead and create signs. Energy does. So our job is to allow ourselves to relax into the truth and the revelations that we've received when we choose to receive them and then allow your mind to expand more, right? That's evolution. Keep, keep growing, keep expanding. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Thank you. I was just confused a little because I know that we're going through all these experiences and source learns from all these experiences. And at times you, <clears throat> you talked about that. So that's what led me to ponder, oh my God, is, is God or source a form of, you know, very advanced, amazing AI of some sort. So, but no, the, you've answered my question. Yeah, it's great. And and the reality is we also need to remember that source is learning from the universal perspective. So, you know, like, so when I feel source, I feel like source is like the soul of the universe where everything is like everything in each person's soul. There's a, it's like the well, right? Where you go whenever you want to know something. For me, I feel it different than the creator because the creator uh, himself, he holds space for this universe. Like that's his job. Just like Jesus's job is to hold compassion for this universe. It's a full-time job in the sense that they're holding awareness. So he's holding awareness. And in order to hold awareness, okay, you have to have awareness of every single thing in existence in every single moment. Right. So he's not learning from what's being fed into him. He's holding space and seeing where maybe these humans are suffering or this is happening and this is working really well. Awesome. He doesn't change anything. Whereas AI would be fed with, now we want to create it in this way. He's not there to change or create anything, except when he saw that humanity was suffering extensively, he was like, we're going to have to do something. But when even when he does something, okay, and he's done a lot of things. I mean, I have, like I said, 20 years of recorded research and different, different amazing experiences, phenomenal stuff. But when he decided to shift and restore, he does something like, let's create a new universal energy. Let's create trust so they can remember how to trust themselves. That's what he does. He does not go out and be like, okay, Danielle and, and Laura and Susan and Randy and Carol and Ashley, this is what you need to do now, right? You're going to follow the rules this way. No, he creates another opportunity for you to see more truth. Does that make sense? So it's different than the, yeah, you can see the education system, right? It's got a hold on us of how we learn and how we take in information and how we express information and how that evolves. Universal perspective is fundamentally different than mental learning. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That was a great question. Oh my gosh. Anybody else? Okay, Susan, yeah. hi. So th I don't know if I've ever asked this or if you've ever talked about it, but I'm, I'm like, where did the creator come from? Okay. Um, gosh, I love these questions. <laughs> <laughs> Carol's over there smiling from ear to ear because she's like, yeah, that's my kind of question. <laughs> <laughs> right? So where did he come from? Um, he came from a time when... He So this is what he's saying. He came from a time when um, experiences, universal experiences were um, less, 
So it's going to be really tricky to put into words the energy. So I also encourage you to feel the energy as he is sharing. Uh, and again, right, as humans, we have that superpower to feel at any given moment. So he says he came from a time where existence itself was less dense, um, less tangible, less experiential. It was, well, okay. So it was all about experience, but experiential in the sense that it's kind of like the difference between reading about experiences and books and you're like, eh, to having the experience yourself. That that's what he means by less experiential. It doesn't mean that there was less experience. It meant that it, he means that they're less diverse. They're less uh, alive. And, you know, for him, he came from the intention for creation. And so there is, um, gosh, it, uh, it's tricky because without understanding the fullness of who you are, you can't go all the way back to the understanding of how creation creation came to be because we're not talking about Adam and Eve and, you know, humanity. We're talking about the existence that was the existence that created the full entire universe that we're living in. Right. So it's solar systems in like, it's funny how your brain, like, even if you think just for a moment ago, when you were thinking about, you know, the creator, were you thinking in terms of the planet and humanity and, and then the solar systems and, and understanding, oh, it's bigger than the solar systems. And then there's black holes, like the universe, right? Like it's massive. And so we're not taught to think in those terms and in order to restore your full awareness of creation itself, you have to you have to expand that knowledge first. Um, yeah, it would be like it wouldn't make sense. You know, it doesn't matter really how deeply I go into this. All it would do would would be to create more confusion. And right now, the creator says the most important thing for us to remember is our own selves because then we'll be able to get in touch with him directly and feel because there isn't really words that can describe it, especially in the current language. <laughs> and again, language isn't just about the letters and the words that we put together. Language is about how we interpret those words. That's really language, right? That's the communication. And so it's the interpretation that needs to expand. So as we expand our awareness of ourselves, then our understanding of the universe itself, it just blows right up. It's phenomenal, right? Like every time I learn more about myself, I learn more about humanity, how we were created to exist, how um, existence itself created that aspect and why. So this is, you know, this is what humanity is working on right now, right? We're coming to this place where all of this wisdom is being restored, right? Wisdom is knowledge plus experience. We have to have the experience. Humans need, they thrive on experience. We don't thrive on knowledge. Knowledge is just a bunch of stuff we know, right? So you'll, you'll re restore that ability to know who he is when you can come to that place where your vibration is at a state where that awareness can come and it, it can coexist, right? When it can't coexist yet because our brain hasn't let our vibration go up there. Um, up is a, I don't know, a term that doesn't really, it's not about someone being higher or more than anyone else. It's just sort of a vibration of, I use up because I see it expanding. And when I see anything expand, it goes out and up and every, all the way around. So, but that was cool. That was a great question. I love how he answered it too. It was brilliant. Thank you. Does that make sense? Yeah. What I feel is it's, it's infinite. Like it's, yeah. Like it's way bigger than my capacity at the moment. Like, I feel like there's other universes, but that sounds like I'm thinking. Yeah. And you can feel them and you just have to feel them. But it's one of those things where as humans, we, we, we want to know, and we have these 
these questions that come. And what he keeps saying is deal with what's in front of you because that's the most important. The other stuff falls into place and then it will become something that's right in front of you for you to know, right? Which okay. Really, really cool, actually. That makes sense because I tend to not want to deal with what's right in front of me and want to yeah. want bigger answers. Yes. And I feel like the bigger answers are what's in front of me. It's so cool, right? It's like, it's like a dichotomy, right? It's like this, you know, I don't want to deal with them. I want the bigger answers. And yet the bigger stuff is right there. And that's exactly it. It's just when you, when you allow yourself to receive it, it's way more infinite than you think that one little thing is, or the thing that makes you uncomfortable or whatever it is. Right. So that's beautifully said. I love that, Susan. That was absolutely awesome. Thank you. And thank you for sharing and asking. Thank you. Laura has a great question. Um, so Laura is asking, how do we continue to work within these systems that were created to manipulate? Um, and, you know, during the masterclass, we learned about those four systems, but I know Laura is um, a teacher. So feeling that, that pressure um, of how do I still exist within this system? And, you know, there are, um, it's really cool because there's truth in everything and there's potential in everything and everyone. And our job is to allow that awareness to come through. And we're here to explore our own potential. And if you remember that inside of each one of those systems, there's the possibility for truth, purity, balance, movement, respect, compassion, joy, all of the nine fundamentals, because they can't be blocked. They're universal energies. So there's room for every single one of those nine illumination to come through. Your job is to pay attention, be present in each moment and go, what's the opportunity here? What's the opportunity? So the education system, for example, it's all about humans coming together. You can use that. You can work with that. That's amazing, right? So there's rules that you have to do this and you have to do that, but there's doesn't they don't tell you Here's the reality. They tell you how to have how you have to do it. But if you can get results in a better way that help everyone, right? So it's coming back to like when I learned about um, and I <laughs> studied self-worth for 12 years, you know, our self-worth develops between the moment we're conceived till the moment we turn 13. So the moment like we we've, we've had our 13 years, well, plus our gestation. And we are officially energetically an adult in this world. And, you know, the greatest guide on the planet is the self-worth guide for anyone who's in the education system for any, because it's one thing that you're, that you need to learn, right? If you haven't done the masterclass on, on healing self-worth, I highly recommend that it, we're going to do that one in September. Um, and, and I will again, share that, that sort of, um, the stages of self-worth development, but it's the same as the financial system, right? Having money isn't bad. Working within it isn't bad. It's the level of integrity you bring to it. Are you aligning with the nine fundamentals or are you aligning with fear and manipulation? Same thing with education, right? Same thing with the medical system. Holy mackerel right? There's the potential, great potential for awesomeness in every one of these systems. Same with religion. Can you imagine if every church on the planet, their whole foundation was, it's important for you to believe in you, not you to believe in Jesus so he can tell you what to do, right? Can you imagine if if all of the religions were in alignment with those nine fundamentals of who humanity is? It'd be a very different experience. 
So none of these systems are, it's really cool because they were designed to manipulate, but they can't manipulate if you know who you are. It's impossible. Because as soon as you know the truth and you can feel into truth at any given moment, right? Using those nine fundamentals, there is zero opportunity for you to be manipulated. And you choose how you're going to act and react on a day-to-day -day basis. Does that make sense? It's coming from a different perspective. It's not holding on to oh, I can't believe we have to deal with this. Oh, I can't believe they're doing this to us. That is a poor me mindset that says why all the things are wrong. It doesn't have any room for growth and evolution. Right? That's who humans were created to be. So your job as a human who's awakening to more awareness is to go, what am I going to do about it? What am I going to do? How can I show up differently instead of, choosing to be overwhelmed and frustrated and angry, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. It's just like when, you know, uh, a lot of people were going through um, so many in the past couple of years of relationships where, you know, the relationships dynamic, relationship dynamics are changing and, you know, they don't feel seen and heard anymore in these relationships. So, and they're angry and they're frustrated and they want the other person to change either because they're changing and the other they feel the other person isn't for all the reasons. There's so many different reasons. But the point is, if you choose to align yourself with the nine fundamentals, the transition we, becomes easeful. There's no more hate. There's no more anger. There's no more resentment, jealousy, judgment. All of those things go away because you're choosing to align yourself with truth, with purity, with compassion and respect. So when you come to that place where you're like, oh, they do love me. They just have a different way to share it and show it. But if you're angry all the time, that's what you're going to get back, right? It's the same thing. Or you come to that place where you're like, you know what? We've done this and now we've outgrown what this relationship can offer. But you can also leave with the awareness and the experience with compassion and respect and, and joy. All of those things are possible, but you have to know who you are in order to do it. You have to, and knowing who you are means immersing yourself in the energy, right? Because again, humans, knowledge and experience creates wisdom. Otherwise, it's a bunch of stuff you know. So right now, We've talked about the nine fundamentals. I've given you a little bit of the energetic vibration. It's in the book. It's in Believe. This summer, why I'm so excited is because we're going to go into the energy. And as you go into the energy and you hold that space, your vibration has the chance to rise, but you're going to be collecting wisdom because you're in the experience of the energy. You're not just hearing the words. And that's what we're going to be doing, you know, because that's what humans were created to do. Humans were created to experience so we can evolve. And we're the ones who are designed to create the change, right? It's exactly what I was talking about in the email that I sent last night about understanding the rebirth process, right? You've got to go through all of the steps, you've got to see what's not working. Most of us wait, we wait till life is super uncomfortable, right? We may, and then we have to surrender and accept that we have to create change. And then we have to start to choose to create change. Those three steps don't have to happen. Those are the most uncomfortable. All those where your relationships are falling apart, where you're, um, you know, you're feeling manipulated, you're feeling hurt, you're feeling angry. Those three steps don't ever have to happen if you align yourself with the nine fundamentals. Why? Because then you know in any given moment you have the awareness to feel truth and you're all ready. So when you go through an experience and you come out the other side, you're like, oh gosh, I feel like I get it now. I get why I had to have this experience. But if you have 
the full universal awareness beforehand, then those experiences, you never have your back against the wall. They never end up being so bad and so dramatic. It's because you didn't allow yourself to learn in the way that we're meant to step towards greater awareness, towards expanding your perspective. You're like, no, I'm going to wait until the universe shows me because I don't want to do anything. And how many, we do it all the time, right? We go from a place of, oh, poor me, I need to be shown, I need to be taught, I need to be told. Well, what taught us that? The education system, right? Perfect. It's another lovely example. And the reality is that's not how humans exist. That's how not how we were created. We were created to be curious, to it's like an Avenger kind of um, like a superhero kind of feeling of we just went in and jumped into everything and anything. We didn't have all these, oh, but uh, this and oh, but that and protect over here and, you know, and make sure over here of all the details. When you know who you are, you don't have to protect yourself because, you know, you're the most infinite universal being in existence. Right. And you have every power. You have every awareness. Making sense? Awesome. So that, <laughs> Whew, it's good. It just, it's a lot, right? But that's the whole point. That's how we were created. So we weren't meant to suffer. We weren't meant to. We've been taught to, and we're addicted to that paradigm. We're addicted to that belief system that says, you've got to do it the hard way, right? Right. And, and just watch how many times you say those things in, in offhanded ways, right? Oh, you're learning because how many times will you, you'll see someone doing something like they're like, oh, it's really hard. And you're like, yeah, you're learning something. But you say it in a way that's not encouraging, that's not aligned with truth. You know, there's a way to say, that's amazing. I love that you're putting in so much effort. What did you, what did, experience did you have, you know? What did you learn about how confident or comfortable or strong you are because of it, right? In our community, we talk about all that all the time, right? In our in the collective, right? How we've done lists of go out and make a list of all your biggest challenges. What are they? And then like the biggest challenges you've ever had in your life, those things that looked like train wrecks that, you know, affected and impacted so much of your, your life. And then what did you learn? What did you learn? And what did you, you know, it's it's understanding. Was there a poor me in it at the time? Because probably there was. But what did you learn? And why are you a different person because of what you went through? It's hard for us to have that perspective. But when you're in alignment with these nine fundamentals, your perspective expands instantaneously. So when you're having the experience, you're aware of what you're learning in the moment. There is no poor me. It doesn't exist. It's not there. It's brilliant, really. Um, so Danielle says you, so you don't need to tear each system down. You can just change it from within. So it aligns you, you change who you be. That's it. You're not changing the system. That's not your job. When enough people change who they be, that system won't exist that way because no one's feeding it. Right. They're using the system, how it's meant to to be for you, how it feeds your life, how it feeds your soul. That's why there's people that are super uh, rocking life in so many different aspects, because they're using the system to feed their passions, their joys, the things that, and if money is something that brings them joy, that's awesome, right? But then there's a whole bunch of people over here who are saying, gosh, that's too much money for one person. That's because you have issues with money. That person doesn't have issues with money right? They have all kinds. They got no issues. It's when we have issues with money that we're going to have all the judgments around it. It's really quite fascinating when you think about it, right? Um, and it, it's also understanding that there's this belief, like they're showing me, there's this belief that, you know, a few people control all of the experiences, right? There's a few beings who came and created manipulation um, systems. And the government ensures, creating the government ensures that those systems exist and function, that they're still healthy, 
right? That they're still constantly evolving and, and creating, they're feeding more through it. It's like a, a, what do you call it? A water, like a, you know, those things that go around with the water in the buckets. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Cats to be, keep being fed, right? They keep giving it energy. But the people who are outside of those rules, the people who have succeeded in any area in their life, it's because they got out of that system and they didn't let the system make them believe they weren't able to do what they wanted. That's why you also have families that have wealth for generations and generations and generations, because there is no belief in that family that we can't be wealthy. Do you see the difference? Because if they, if you believe you do and you are, then it will happen. If you believe you're not, you can't, you won't, it shouldn't. Because most of us who are, you know, for humans who, where there's a lot of struggle with financial systems, uh, issues. It's not that you believe you can't have it. It's that somewhere along the line, you've been taught that it's bad, that it's bad to have more, that it's bad to take more than you deserve. Again, another limiting component. We're also going to deal with that one this summer, which is phenomenal. Um, so there's, you know, it's, it's, understanding that you're not you're not changing the system that is not your job your job is to change who you be within these systems if you stop being you because of the system that's impacting your greatness when you can restore who you be inside of every system then you're just using those systems to feed your greatness that's why you see humans who are doing incredible things. You look at Taylor Swift, right? She's out there rocking the world because she's not living inside of any of those belief systems. She is honoring who she is and she's using those belief systems to, to do what she wants to do. It's phenomenal. It's brilliant. Okay. Um, Oh, yes, it was good, right, Carol? Like that energy and that awareness and the fact that, you know, I, I was just funny because yesterday morning I was like, oh, I felt that message come up and I was like, oh, okay, so this is the stages and how it works and uh, the stages of rebirth. And, and it just made so much sense, right? Like if you can start at the realignment stage where you're literally, you know, you get those, those head cold symptoms, right? Where it's kind of like, okay, I need to retreat because you're, You've just gone through a massive awareness shift, right? And then you just need to decompress it a little bit. That's why every course I teach will never be compacted where you can like watch, watch on um, like a, how do they watch the, when you binge watch, that's the word I'm looking for, because it would fry your system and you stop taking any information in. That's why we don't do anything with more than one session a week ever, because you need at least a week to integrate, right? And I remember all the entrepreneurs were like, you can't do it that way. And I'm like, again, not going to listen to the system because humans are more important to me than the system and the, the way that we've been taught. I don't care. My, my thing that I care about is your success, your evolution, and if I can deliver it in a way that you're going to see massive growth, massive awareness shifts, and it's going to change your life, then that's what's important to me. So, you know, it's not the bottom line. But that's, this is always, yeah. Okay. So loving all these questions. Does anybody have anything else you want to share? You want to talk about? You want to... Yeah, questions, sharing, anything. Or are we feeling pretty good here? Yeah, we're good. So is there, um, I know a couple of you, well, quite a few, or have signed up for the Summer Elevate experience, the course. So that's really cool. So um, we've got 12 weeks. That starts next Wednesday, June 5th. Gosh, it's crazy. It's already June. Um and so we're going to be in doing that for 12 weeks. 
it is going to be, um, like I said, an immersive experience. Uh, where do we sign up? That's a great question. I'm going to get that link for you right now. And it is at, if you go to michellevickers.com, I'll give you the link in one second. But if you go to um, michellevickers.com and then under work with Michelle, the Elevate Experience course, and copy, and I'll just put that link right here. Is that the nine fundamentals? That is the for the nine fundamentals. Oh, I haven't seen, I've been waiting for to see something on it. Oh, there yeah, you I missed it. There we go. Okay, so I sent it there. Uh, it's in the post. I'll send you an email tomorrow with um, more information. Um, yeah, yeah, 100%. That's great to know. Thank you, Laura. Um, yeah, so I'll send an email out for tomorrow for sure. But that's going to give you, um, yeah, the opportunity to go into all of them. And, and like every course we do, the recordings of every session are there. So you can go back. And um, I know right now there'll be at least, you'll have at least two years, full two years access. Um, so it's not like it's going to go away. Once your 12 weeks are done, you go in, you do it as many times as you want. And um, I know um, there's a lot of members of the community that, you know, we go back and we watch those replays and, and there's replays even in our, our, all of our communities. And when we do a fear releasing ceremony, you know, people will go back right now. We're on hiatus for the collective for the next three months, but it's the best time for new members because then they have three years of videos to catch up on, to watch and sacred ceremonies. And, you know, it's, it's amazing. And, and all of our members are going back and they're watching and they're, they're, they're coming Here's the reality. I have never not learned something from sharing the same thing over and over again. Every time I share it, the universe, whoever is speaking, shares it in a different way. Why? Because I'm sharing it with a different audience. That means that there's different souls that showed up to hear the answer. And those souls got together to make sure that how I say it is going to make sense to those people who are listening. If different people showed up today, it would be a different, it would be a completely different call too. Because, and, and yet the same questions could have been asked. That's how fascinating the universe is and how it works. And so, um, yeah, I mean, there's, it's brilliant. I do suggest as well, getting the book, believe if you don't have it. Uh, and if you don't want to do the whole course, start with the book. The book is great. Um, and it's, on Amazon. Um, it's also on Indigo. Um, Indigo seems to be, I think, the best price at the moment. But um, And then there are some local bookstores that carry it too. Um, yeah, and they all can get it. So you can all ask at your local bookstore, wherever you are, if they can get a copy in for you too. Yeah. So yeah. That's good. Everybody else, we're good. Yes, Laura. Realizing the answer to all my questions keeps coming back to change who you be. And I think I need to get it tattooed somewhere <laughs> that I can see it because it's always the same answer. <laughs> right? right? It's said in a different way, but it always yeah. comes back to the same truth. Change yeah. who you be. And, and the cool thing is we change who we be when we change our perspective of how life is happening to us and around us, right? <clears throat> That's um, what I loved when they were sharing even the rebirth process in the email last night when they said, change is a choice. It's a choice. And either we're choosing to participate or we're not. Either way, change is going to happen because it's inevitable because we're part of evolution. But Change is choice. How it occurs is up to you, right? And if you choose to participate in it by allowing your awareness to expand and grow, which is why it's honestly, Laura, that's the foundation of every single course I've ever offered. Everything I do, every podcast episode, my intention is to help you expand your awareness of who you are and everything in existence. Because then you become stronger. You become more aligned with who you are. You become more fearless. You become more powerful. 
right? My intention is if all humans can reclaim their power, the power that we lost and we're never meant to lose, right? It's our birthright. If you think about it, it's our birthright. And yet most of us doesn't, don't even know it exists. We don't even know who we are. And that's why humans are wandering around suffering, right? Depression, anxiety, constantly under fear, judgment, jealousy, everything, all the things. It's because we don't know who we are. But when you can restore your awareness of the basics, and the basics are the nine fundamentals, right? It's love, truth, compassion, respect, joy, purity, uh, balance, movement, and illumination. And then trust, because trust is the universal energy that was introduced when the creator decided to transform this entire universe. So we're going to do all 10. That's the foundation of you. When you can feel them and know them in the way that we're going to remember, we talked about this in the masterclass, alchemy is nine minutes. If you can hold that vibration of that energy for nine minutes, you become that energy. So we're going to give you guys the opportunity every week, we're going to do a new energy and I'm going to hold that space probably 12 to 15 minutes so that we can go in. We're going to talk about the energy. We're going to break it down. We're going to break down all the potential that each one has, right? What it means, how it's going to impact you, how it can elevate your life to that next level. And then we're going to hold the vibration and you're going to experience it. And I'll tell you, remember, you're a human, but you're a soul and you feel. And I'm going to turn the vibration all the way up so that your ability to feel it is magnified. And as you feel it, you're going to feel new aspects and new truths about yourself, about your life, and about what you're meant to be doing. Because that just naturally happens when you're in alignment with each one of those energies. And that's why it's like a rebirth every week that you're going to go through. Literally every single week. It's going to be phenomenal. I have goosebumps again, just thinking about it. Because that's how powerful knowing who you are is. Make sense? Awesome. I thank you guys so much for coming. Does anybody have anything else you want to add? Are we good? We're all right. We're good. Yes. Do you feel like you got your answer? Your answer is questioned. <laughs> that too. Your questions answered. Some of them. Yep. Thank you so much. Looking forward to the summer. Me too. Yeah. It's going to be a fun summer, right? That's the whole point is, you know, we're here to have fun. Thank you. Thank you, Danielle. That was great. Yeah. You know, we're here to have fun. We're supposed to be having fun. And again, having fun is a choice. It's, it's choosing to step out of this sucks. This is hard. This is to, all right, let's go see what we're capable of. And let's figure it out together because it's way more fun than doing it by yourself, right? I used to do this, like I said, right? That's why I created the collective three years ago, three and a half years ago. We, uh, we just completed our third year and I used to do it in my bedroom at night by myself, lying in bed. And I was like, there's got to be other humans who want to explore the universe too. Like, I can't be the only one. And it turns out there is. And you guys show up and there's amazing questions and incredible conversations. And we've all grown as a result because we can talk about anything. There is zero judgment in that community. Why? Because, well, judgment's a waste of time for all of us. Doesn't do anything positive. So I love you. I really appreciate your time and um, your trust again in me, you know, and we're, um, we're going to have fun. This is amazing. Thank you so, so much for showing up. And if you have any questions, please send me an email. I'll send you one um, again tomorrow with the um, sign up details for the program. And we start on Wednesday. Okay. Thanks so much. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. 
If you enjoyed this conversation and want to learn more, head on over to michellevickers.com. Join our mailing list to receive new episodes right to your inbox or apply to be a guest on the show. If this episode made you think of someone while you were listening, forward the link onto that person with a little note about why it made you think of them because the greatest gift you can give another human is to see the beauty and purity of who they truly are. Until next time, stay curious.